Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at my entire Super Nintendo game collection. I've been having a lot of fun doing these collection videos because in some cases it's been many years since I've talked about these collections, or in the case of the Super Nintendo, I've never actually done an entire video dedicated to my whole collection like this. Now I have a little over 120 Super Nintendo games, and as you see here, it's a mix of a lot of loose copies and also complete in box stuff and also some imports and uh, you know some kind of oddball stuff as well. Probably almost 10 years ago when you could find a lot of these at garage sales and pawn shops. And so that's where the vast majority of this stuff came from. And as with previous collection videos, I'm gonna go fairly quick here because we have a lot of games to get through. Starting, I think, with some of the big heavy hitters from Nintendo themselves. You know, when you look at the Super Nintendo, it's just amazing how many classic games Nintendo released during that period. So many of these games are still played and sought after today. They're still enjoyed by gamers today. It's quite amazing all the things that just came out for this awesome console. And so I would say I have a lot of the ones that you would expect to see in a collection like this. Obviously, uh, the Super Mario All-Stars, I have Super Metroid, uh, Legend of Zelda, you know, I have two of the three Donkey Kong countries, Star Fox. Uh, I have this really weird brand new copy of F-Zero that I picked up maybe five years ago. It's weird that that I have a sealed brand new copy of any game of this era, but I believe, now correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe that there was some new old stock discovered of F-Zero. And again, I think this is about five years ago. And so uh, at the time you could easily pick up a sealed copy of that, which is pretty wild. And going through my collection, I was kind of surprised to see that there are actually multiple variants of Super Mario World you can see the two cartridges I have here. I didn't realize that they were slightly different. Notice that the one on the left has Super on its own line as opposed to the one on the right, which has Super Mario World all ran together. Also, the uh, the spines are a little bit different as well. Uh, they have different serial numbers. The one on the right is actually the first release and then the one on the left is actually the second release. And you can tell because it has a dash one in the serial number. Just thought that was kind of interesting. Something to look out for when you're collecting for the Super Nintendo. And then here are some more Nintendo published games. Again, just a testament to the variety of stuff that they put out on this console. You know, when I first saw Uniracers, again, I was surprised. Like, oh yeah, that's right. That's a Nintendo published arcade racing game. And you know, it kind of never really gets talked about even though it's a really cool game. Also, Wario's Woods. Talk about another kind of forgotten Nintendo game and, you know, maybe for a good reason. As you can see here, it's yet another Tetris Match 3 clone, but doing it kind of in its own style. You know, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, again, there were a lot of these type of games released at the time, so I'm not surprised that no one really remembers this one, but I thought it's pretty cool. Now, I don't probably have to tell you guys, but one of the great things about this era and specifically the Super Nintendo was just how many excellent role-playing games got released on that system. And you see nine of them here. And again, so fun to collect for, although some of these can be very expensive to pick up today, sadly. And so I guess that's probably one of the reasons why people get so excited when these get ported over to, you know, modern systems like the Nintendo Switch, you know, people get so excited when a couple years ago when Earthbound, I don't think, was it, did it come out on the Switch or was it the Wii U or the 3DS? I'm trying to remember now because I remember people were asking for it and then Nintendo finally brought it out. Or am I thinking of, <laughs> am I thinking of the mini console? I, I don't know. My, my memory's getting a little fuzzy here, but, uh, Thankfully, I do have a physical version of Earthbound uh, in the original box with its manual, although it's not complete, uh, but still, it's really cool to have this in my collection. 
And then here you see I have the Super Famicom version of Chrono Trigger. Now the reason why I originally picked this up a couple years ago is because it was so cheap compared to the English version. And I really just wanted a copy of it. Plus some of the clone systems that you get, they'll allow you to apply English patches to these games and then just run them in English, which is awesome. Although since then I have picked up a proper English release of Chrono Trigger, which, you know, it's gonna be no surprise, but it's one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. It's such a great game. I originally actually played this way back in the day on my modded PSP. I was running the ROM of it and played it there. Uh, then I got the DS version, which is excellent as well. And probably something that Chrono Trigger fans should pick up because it's uh, it's slightly better actually. It has some really cool cutscenes, but yeah, just another great JRPG on the Super Nintendo. And speaking of Super Famicom games, here are another ones that I have complete in the box. Now, I picked up Ultima Savage Empire because I, I'm kind of always on the lookout for Ultima games and I was really surprised to see that the Savage Empire was released on the Super Famicom. I guess Ultima is really popular over in Japan and so it's really cool to get a copy of that. I actually, I'm familiar with that game on the PC. Uh, so again, it's cool to have it on Famicom. And then uh, over there, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name of that Squaresoft game right there. It, it only came out in Japan. It is a real-time uh, strategy game that I picked up, I believe in an expo for maybe like $5. And so I just couldn't turn it down even though I can't really play it. I have to put an English patch on it. Now you guys know me and I love my arcade shooters and here are a bunch of them. Now most of these are, they're gonna be, you know, shoot 'em ups. You know, Darius, obviously, uh, Axel A, Super R-Type. We have UN Squadron, Thunder Spirits in here. Uh, also, Gun Force is in here, although that's not really a shoot 'em up. That's more of a Contra style run and gun game. But I like this era of of games for that reason. I know many of you watching this channel feel the, the same way, where you know this 16-bit era just did these kind of games so well. And I like to play these games even today. You know, if I have just a couple minutes to, to play a Super Nintendo game, often I will go for a shooter. Again, just because I can jump in and out so quickly. But it's funny because looking at these, I always kind of go back and forth as to whether I think the Super Nintendo was better at this genre or the Sega Genesis, because the Sega Genesis had a ton of them as well. So I'd love to know down in the comments which system you thought did shoot 'em ups better. Was it the Super Nintendo or the Sega Genesis? And then here's something pretty cool in my Super Nintendo collection. This is a newer release by Retrobit. They did this uh, maybe about a year or two ago where it's R-Type 3 and Super R-Type in this really cool collector's edition. I love how you get an actual 16-bit game cartridge, plus it also has a uh, hardcover notebook there, has some stickers, has some art prints, um, it also has a bunch of pins in there, uh, certificate of authenticity and a nice box to go in. So uh, yeah, it's a really cool collectible. Another genre I love playing, of course, is arcade racing games. And there are some fun ones on the Super Nintendo. I have six of them right here, including uh, Rock and Roll Racing, Speaks to My Heart. That is such a fun game. Plus, Biker Mice from Mars. That might actually be my favorite racing game on the system. I just think it's amazing. And then you have RPM Racing, which is, I guess, a spiritual successor to Rock and Roll Racing. Although, I don't know if I really like it as much, but uh, you know, it's a decent game. But I know there's a bunch of other arcade racing games out there for the system. I see them all the time, but I would love to know down in the comments which ones you think I should probably get, uh, which ones you enjoy playing as well, because I, I think I could beef this up a little bit, don't you think? And then here are some fun arcade style games on the Super Nintendo, including Super Smash TV. Now, when I was doing this video, I couldn't find my original copy of this game. And so I actually went out and bought it recently again. Thankfully, it's not a too expensive game, but I love playing this game. It's so much fun. Also, the version of Arkanoid 2 on the Super Nintendo is fantastic. This is a game that I just love. I mean, the thing is, I grew up playing Super Breakout on my Atari 2600. 
and getting Arkanoid was just the next evolution of that game. And I still think this is a really fun game today. I got sucked into it capturing the footage this week for this video. And Choplifter 3 is a really cool game as well. I remember years ago, we covered this on a Hidden Gems video with John Hancock. Uh, actually, he suggested that we do Choplifter 3 and he was right. It's a great game. Here are some more games that I really enjoy in my collection, including Contra 3. That is one of those games that has become fairly collectible on the Super Nintendo over the last couple years. Uh, it's just one of those games that people love to play. Um, it's great to stream. I I've watched a couple speed runs of that game and I'm always blown away by people who just have it memorized from front to back. Very impressive. As well as Mega Man X. That is a copy of a game that I believe I found at a, uh, at a thrift store. It's just one of those lucky finds that you hear about. That was a pretty cool find. Uh, also, Super Turrican is a great run and gun game. And then down there you have uh, The Legend of the Mystical Ninja, another game that I actually have a complete copy of. So it's great to have, have a complete copy of that because that is a really fun game as well. And then I have some odd kind of fan ROM hacks that have been put into physical form. Actually, I say that they're odd, but they're actually not, they're pretty cool. So essentially what happens is that fans out there will hack original ROMs and either alter you know, the graphics or maybe they'll update the, the text in the game or make them harder or easier, stuff like that. Uh, and then you know people will put them out in physical form. And so that's what these are. These actually play on the original hardware, which is really cool. But the one I want to highlight is Earthbound Uncut. So, you know, it's going to be no surprise to anyone that there are some Uber fans out there and they were kind of disappointed in the translation that we got in North America from the original Japanese version. And so what this is, is kind of a best of. So they, they changed the name of some of the characters back to what they should have been called in the original version. Uh, they've also restored some of the original graphics because the original game did have some religious overtones to it and some religious things in the background. So this is basically, it's still in English. It's just that they've kind of brought it to what they consider to be the official best version of it. Does that make sense? But anyways, it's cool to have a physical copy of that now. And here are my original copies of Earthworm Jim 1 and 2, but also in my collection, I got the really cool 25th anniversary edition that was released by IM8Bit a couple years ago. So this is pretty cool. So basically they created a brand new playable Super Nintendo cartridge that has both of those games on it. And so it's basically just a combo cart. And then they have this special kind of fold out foil box here that is uh, glossy and has kind of like slightly raised embellishments. Very nice looking. And then there's also this instruction booklet that is double sided. And so half of it is designed for the first game and half of it's designed for the second. And it includes a bunch of original artwork and some of behind the scenes stuff of the making of the games. And so I thought that was a really cool special edition for, again, the 25th anniversary. And then here are some random imports I've picked up over the years. And that has been a lot of fun collecting for this system is diving into some of the Japanese games that maybe we didn't get, or maybe their version of it is just slightly different than the one we got. And often they're way cheaper than the English version. So uh, if you have, you know, like a clone system like the Hyperkin or one of the analog systems like the, the Super NT, you might want to look into getting Super Famicom games because they can be a lot of fun. And, you know, there's hundreds of them that maybe you've never played before. You know, it's funny when looking back at that era of gaming, man, there were so many licensed games. I kind of feel like there are probably more licensed games back then, especially the movies than there are now. Don't you think? Seems like now maybe a licensed game would come out every once in a while that's hooked to some sort of action movie. But man, back then, it just seems like they were just dime a dozen. And so obviously we got a Jurassic Park game back then. Uh, you have a Hook game, which is actually a pretty cool side-scrolling platforming game. Same with The Wizard of Oz. And then of course, some of the best that were ever made for the system, you have the three great 
Star Wars games that were released back then. Uh, both of these, or actually all three of them, are just fantastic and really cool games. But it doesn't end there. You, of course, have the Rocketeer. And then next to that, you've got Robocop versus Terminator. Not exactly movie tie-in, but I guess that's probably a comic book, right? Anyways, you know what I'm talking about. And then also you have Alien versus Predator. Of course, that's a really fun beat-em-up. And then check it out, you have Ultraman. And I don't remember where I got that from. I probably just picked it up because Ultraman looks awesome. This is a fighting game that... I don't know if it's good or not. I, I can't really tell. I'm not the best at fighting games, but I do dig having an Ultraman game on the Super Nintendo. We got a couple more fighting and beat em up games here, including Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Of course, you always have to have a copy of Street Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo. And then King of the Monsters 2, which really isn't a traditional fighting game. It's more of a beat em up or some people even consider these to be like wrestling games. It's kind of designed sort of like that, but basically you're a monster stomping around, taking out buildings, never gets old, super fun game. And then here are a bunch of 2D platforming games. And, you know, I don't need to tell you guys, but you know, the 16 bit era, you know, both on the Super Nintendo and the Genesis were just, it was like the heyday of this genre. So many great games came out you know, in the platforming genre at the time, both, you know, from big publishers as well as little ones. And it's really fun to collect for because yes, you know all about the, the big Nintendo franchises, but then you can d dive into some of these right here where, you know, maybe a little lesser known, dare I say hidden gems, but that's what they kind of are, you know, maybe a little rough around the edges sometimes, but still there is a lot of joy to be found in these games. And again, they're fun to collect for. And of course I had to include this beautiful shot of the red doom cartridge. I love how bold that is. And as I was making this video, I was thinking, you know, it's kind of weird why Nintendo didn't do more colored cartridges. I mean, as far as colored cartridges go, I know there was the red Spider-Man uh, Maximum Carnage, you know, cartridge that came out in red. There was the black Killer Instinct cartridge that came out, but that's pretty much it, right? Like, it's kind of weird. I mean, you know, I don't know. I just kind of surprised that they didn't try to do more of those. I know they did a little bit more, it seems like, on the NES, but anyways, just something I kind of noticed. And then some more random loose cartridges in my collection. And as I look at these, man, I can't remember where I got these. Again, it used to be back, I don't know, five, 10 years ago, you would find Super Nintendo cartridges all day long at your local garage sales here in the Seattle area. And it was glorious. <laughs> I wish I could go back in time and actually get more of them. You know what I mean? Because now, you never see them. You just don't, you know? And you know, it's it's probably because most people either got rid of them and now they're in the hands of collectors or if they do have them, they know what they have and they're probably not gonna try to get rid of them at a garage sale. And you know, again, more power to them, of course, but oh man, back in the day, it was so much fun to go there and walk into somebody's yard and dig through a box and see a bunch of cartridges and just buy them all for a buck or two, you know? Ah, I miss that. And of course, anybody who has the actual physical console probably wants the official cleaning kit. I just think that's so cool. I love the fact that they had one of those. I of course have it in a box, although it's fairly beat up. And then next to that, of course, you have the amazing Super Game Boy. That's a really cool adapter that lets you play, obviously, Game Boy games on your Super Nintendo. Speaking of new Super Nintendo games that got a physical release, you see two of them that I have here in my collection, uh, starting with Little Medusa by Mega Cat Studios. So that is an action puzzle game that plays very similar to a game that we've covered on Hidden Gems before called Kickle Cubicle. Uh, really fun game. Now, this also came out, I believe, on the NES and the Sega Genesis, but uh, the Super Nintendo got new graphics, new music, new sounds, uh, a couple new secrets as well. And then you have Fork Parker's Crunch Out, also published by Mega Cat Studios. So, oh my God, this is a business sim, basically, where you are... You are a shady CEO who is in charge of a game development studio, 
basically trying to screw over the customers, your developers, uh, everyone in between. It's pretty hilarious. I love that this got a physical version. It's, it's actually a really fun game. All right, guys, well, that is it. That is my entire Super Nintendo game collection. And, you know, making this video, going back and replaying a lot of these games for this, I have to say that I'm, I'm pretty happy with my collection. I mean, thankfully, I was able to start collecting these games long before they got stupid expensive, you know. But even so, you know, a lot of these games that I have, I have the loose copy of the cartridge. And you can save a ton of money if you're willing to just get a loose, you know, cartridge copy of these. It's only whenever you try to get them complete in the box, the manuals, and in perfect condition that they can sometimes go in the hundreds of dollars. But often some of these games, especially some of the lesser known ones, you can pick up for a relatively decent price. At least I think so. But I would love to know down in the comments what you guys think of my collection. And also, are there any games you think I absolutely need to pick up for my Super Nintendo collection? I would love to know. Also, you know, I'm always looking for those imports, man. So if there's some Super Famicom games, well, hey, let me know. But as always, guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing and take care.